just a couple weeks ago, sir, where you uh, threw out there on your Twitter feed that uh, Russell Wilson's been sacked in a, in a bunch of a bunch of times. You threw the number out there, and you said that this bears close monitoring. And then you know uh, Russell Wilson was on uh, DP show uh, mentioning, <laughs> sort of essentially saying, "Yeah, let, this should be monitored." Um, and uh, are, are there calls coming to Seattle for Russ? Like what? What is actually cooking there that could lead to something other than the uh, the assumed uh, role that Russell has had there in Seattle continuing? Um, yeah, I mean, look, everybody ultimately has a price. There's a price on every professional athlete's head in terms of trade compensation, whether it's stated or unstated, whether it's known um, because they've had internal discussions about it among the people who currently pay his checks. Or, or whether it's, you know, art, I'll know it when I see it. You know, when I hear it, it'll, it'll happen. Um, I'll, that will be enough for us to say, wait a minute, door B is better than what we currently have in door A, especially because things between us and the guy on the other side of door A just aren't rosy right now and, and you know, maybe won't be imminently more rosy anytime soon. So I think that's just something that, you know, it's a lot of time between now and the draft and, Teams had been hearing rumblings of discontent there before I heard it. I started hearing it the weekend of Super Bowl Sunday, and then I did more digging, and the more I dig, the more it was clear to me that there was some real there there. And then, as you said, Russ basically confirmed everything. And for Russ to speak the way Russ spoke, um, knowing him, knowing sort of how um, guarded he can be, and, and how calculated he would be about what he says and what he doesn't say and, and how close he'll go to towing certain lines and how much he won't. I thought it spoke volumes, and that just intensified the calls from other teams. And I don't think that it will necessarily let up anytime soon. And at some point, does somebody say something that John Schneider and Pete Carroll kind of jump up from their seats and, and talk about and strongly consider? I mean, I don't see why that's an impossibility. Well, it's because Geno Smith's there, Jason. <laughs> I mean, and I, and I say that with the ultimate respect. Like, uh, what, I mean, and that's what's so surprising to a lot of people. I've heard rumors to that effect way back even to the draft in Dallas where Baker Mayfield was a first-round draft choice. Keep an eye out for Seattle maybe choosing a quarterback yeah. in the draft. I mean, I, I've heard that for you. But what is it? you got two insanely positive, successful guys in Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. What What is the, the there that might be there? For, well, for I mean, look, uh, you know, when, when they had boots on the ground watching Josh Allen, uh, you know, a personal workout, that caught some people's attention. And they did a deal a few years ago. I'm old enough to remember that wasn't just a hand sliding into a glove. That was a long, arduous process that took some twists and turns and had periods of time where one side or the other was, you know, incommunicado. Uh, that was a staccato process that wasn't exactly linear and, and wasn't as simple, frankly, as a lot of franchise quarterback extensions are. Um, I, look, he's not getting any younger, and he's still getting hit a lot. And you're, we're in an era where players are, are seeing with increasing regularity that, that they can kind of rattle chains a little bit, and, and they, they can. Um, yep have more of a say in what's going on around them and how they're incubated or how they're not incubated um, and how assets are deployed. And he's seeing these guys 10 years older than him, one guy in particular, continually fight for a Super Bowl and, and kind of call his own shot like Babe Ruth, pick a team and win a Super Bowl. Uh, and you, you kind of start looking around and feeling 10 years in your football mortality a little bit. And if you truly want to be that great, um, and you feel like there's certain things you need to get there that they don't seem to really want to give you, or certain, um, you know, a certain sort of level of, of of voice or ownership of the situation that you don't feel like you've been granted with each year that goes by, and things don't necessarily change, then that frustration can mount. And I think that's kind of where we are right now. And is it completely untenable? No, um, but I. You know, why Why was it weird a couple years ago? You know what I mean? Why yeah. hasn't it gone as swimmingly as some some other um, 
of, of these situations when you have a guy who's that good. Last thing. I don't, I don't know that I exactly know. Right. Um, but it's sort of a thing, you know? It's it sort is. Of, it's it, a lingering thing. It, it keeps going on. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.